Right now. Action. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's, uh, we're, we're going to be preaching over there, but we're going to start in prayer here. And um, I'm not sure I heard there's some people over there. I'm just going to ask if three people, mighty prayer warriors, can help me pray uh, in this area. Who's a mighty prayer warrior in Australia? In Sydney, Australia. Amen. She was here. Need three, do you? Okay, at least two. I'll, I'll, I can pray. Two, okay. And I just want you to hold that when you, and when you pass it off, just... Okay. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for paving the way for David to be able to come here today so he can preach the Word of God. Yes. We know here in Sydney that uh, many people need to hear what David has to say, and we know that the Holy Spirit is working through him, and we pray today that many people receive... The message of Christ and that they repent and turn to Jesus. We also pray that this nation of Australia comes to repentance because this nation needs much healing, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Who's the second prayer warrior here? Amen. Amen. Going to hold that too? Yeah. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ with my brothers and sisters. Lord, we just pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit on everyone's hearts. It says when He comes, He will convict the world of sin yes. and of judgment and of righteousness. Yes. Lord, they've broken Your laws. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. And Lord, I pray that we have the, the grace and the humility to deliver the gospel with a balance, with the law and the grace that You have in Your Word. We pray, Lord, that whoever is preaching, David Lynn, whoever helps him, we just pray, Lord, that You would put your words in their mouth and give them the words to speak in the same hour, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would be glorified. You said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, Father Amen. God. So we just declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, the yes. risen Christ, yes. the yes. Alpha and the Omega, the beginning yes, and the end, Lord. We praise your holy name, yes. Adonai, Yahweh, hallelujah. Lord, I just pray for everyone who labors for you, for them to have the boldness, to, to not fear their faces or be dismayed, but to be built up as an iron pillar, a defense city. Yes. Lord, we pray that you would be glorified, that everyone would use their hands and their feet and their eyes and their mouths yes. and their ears to worship you and become a living yes. sacrifice. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. 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 Father God, we just give you thanks and praise, Lord, in this Sydney area off George Street, Lord God. And we pray for every passerby. We pray for every person in this circle. We pray for the Christian community inside of Sydney and Australia, Father, that's under attack today by the enemy, Lord God. We, we just pray today that your presence would come down in Australia, Lord God, starting in Sydney on this hour right now, Lord God, that you would move in the hearts of uh, every person, uh, the natives, oh Lord, the people from China, India, Lord, the, uh, those from Europe, Lord God, those who have been living here for, for hundreds of years, oh God. We pray for those who are captive in sin, Lord God, sins of, uh, of adultery, Lord God, those who are sleeping around with someone else's wife, Father God. We pray for those who are sleeping around even as single people that are not married, oh God. We pray that they would see, Lord God, that their, their soul is on the line. We pray that they would see, Lord God, today, Lord God, that this is not the way to live uh, in an uncommitted relationship, Father. We pray for those who are in the Sodomite community, Lord God, those who are living in lifestyles that the Bible says is immoral and ungodly. We pray for them today, especially in this month, oh God, which belongs to you and to no other, Lord God. We pray that this month, oh God, would glorify you, Lord God, this sixth month of the year. Lord God, we know, Lord God, it is you that made the heavens and the earth. It is you that made the seasons. And Father, you gave a promise, oh God, that you would not flood the earth, but you said one day fire is coming. So Lord, we pray today that you would save many people, Father God, and even this small group. We pray that you would anoint us today, Lord God, and raise us up, oh God, and use us today. Our testimonies, we thank you for it, Lord God, and we just pray that you win many people to you on this hour, Lord God, and we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, that revival, true revival, would come to Australia, if it's possible, in these last days, oh God, we know, Lord, there's going to be a falling away, 
We even pray for the church leaders. Hallelujah. We pray for those who are in, in churches that are soft and compromising. Those who have given in to, to lockdowns when they should have been open, oh God. The churches should have been open, oh God. But the leaders uh, fell a, a away, Lord God. I, we pray for the police officers, oh God. Uh, Lord, we pray because they're doing a hard job. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless them and, 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 and keep their eyes open to have favor towards the things of God because there is no law and order without God in their lives, Father God. So we pray that they would all be born again. We pray that the pastors would get a backbone in their lives oh god so that they would stand up for righteousness and not bow down to the ways of the enemy we pray oh god father for the right positions oh god that women would be women and men would be men father god that the men would be leaders and heads as they're called to and the women lord god would be women lord god they would uh, be honorable they would love their husbands oh god as the word of god says they'd be obedient to their husbands submissive to their husbands supporters of their husbands we pray for order in the house of god we pray oh Oh God, that the mindset would shift in Australia, that the feminists would see, Lord God, that there, there is no true feminine without the, 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 the teachings of the word of God, oh Lord, because you made them male and female. And we pray, oh God, that, they, that everyone would see who they really are and how to conduct themselves in these last days, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that the truth would be spoken on the streets as wisdom is spoken on the streets, O oh Lord God. We pray today there will be a change and a shift in Australia. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the only Lord and Savior, the only way to God in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And we pray this together in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Well, we're going to go um, to the other side. Apparently, that's the place where people are more people are yeah is that what everybody was saying it's a bit more funneled so it's, it's more yeah. more funneled so we want to funnel the gospel today 100%. amen yeah. hallelujah praise the mighty name of the lord so if you're watching online um this was the meetup spot in front of the apple store so right where is how do we get there to the other place just we can walk through the strand there or we can walk around the okay so we're walking Let's let's walk around and praise the Lord together. How about that? Are you guys okay to praise the Lord together? Amen. We need we need some accompaniment with with everybody. Who loves the Lord Jesus Christ in Australia? Just put up your hand. And I'm talking about those who are pretending they're not listening, but they really are. How many of you love Jesus in this in this on the street? Man, you love Jesus. Nihao, Yesu, Aini. He loves you. Jesus loves you. Amen. Okay, well let's let let's let's go around and sing some song. What song do you guys sing in Australia? What's a what's a gospel song? Everybody's. He is the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. 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 Okay, we could do that. Oh, he is the King. All right, let me see if I can. Get a, get something going while we do that. How about that? We get an instrumental, so we're, Amen. That's that's this, this is going to be a good time, guys. Are you carrying your gear around? So I'm gonna uh, we're going to be walking around and, and singing praise while we go. Yeah. Is, is this all? all oh all yes, my bag. Yeah, yeah, I gotta carry my bag. Yeah. 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 And then that is that yours? Yeah, yeah, and that that, that and. and how do you want to carry? Again, I, I, I can carry it. You want to leave on number? Yeah, so, that's right. It's, it's not. Amen. Can I hold your microphone? Oh, if you want, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you hold my jumper, Sue? Right off. Oh, oh. um. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Powerful prayer, brother. Good stuff. Oh, glory to God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, bro. It's the Holy Spirit's work. Yeah, I just jump out in faith and hope we give you. Hey, brother. God bless you, brother. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you brother. Yeah. All right, guys. Okay, maybe you can hold that while we walk. But stay Amen. close to the front. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come up in the front, brother. Come up in the front. Hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory. Ah, come on, everybody. Come on. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory. 
Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ and Lord of lords, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, raise your hands today. Doesn't matter if you're Muslim or whatever, Jesus Christ is still the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise God. This way? Amen, everybody. Jesus Christ is Lord in Australia and Sydney. Come on, church. Lord of Lords, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, kings and Lord of Lords, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, everybody. Sing with me. Hallelujah. Jesus, kings of peace, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, prince 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 of peace, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Alle Come on, everybody. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. In this month, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He's King of Kings. Jesus is King of Kings. June belongs to Jesus. Every month belongs to Jesus. Because Jesus is King of Kings. Jesus is Lord of Lords. Repent of your sins. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He died for you. He died for me. He's coming again. Repent of your sins. Be born again. Get right with God. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. Time is short. Get right with the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Repent of your sins. Be born again. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Get right with God. Get right with God. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. Get right with the Lord. Get right with the Lord. Repent of your sins. Be born again. Now, is this the place that we're talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, what a day to be alive. You know, it's a blessing to be alive today. Hallelujah. If you're from Australia here, most of you might be. Some of you are tourists. My name is David, and I want to let you know today that there's coming a day when we're all going to stand before the Lord, every one of you. Every person in this crowd is going to stand before the Lord. We're all going to have to give an account of our lives. And the Bible says that not everybody is going to have a right relationship with God. Some people are going to go to hell. And it's a sad case. There is a hell, just like there's jail if you do crime. If you do the crime, you're going to pay the time. There is a God, whether you believe it or not. And you know what? Deep inside your life, you know there's something spiritual in everybody's life. That's why some of you do yoga meditation. You believe in the spiritual realm. Some of you are Buddhists. You believe in the spiritual realm. Some of you are Muslim. You believe in the spiritual realm. You're taught that there's going to be a last day. 
Some of you don't even know what's going on, but you have nightmares, you have dreams, you have real spiritual experiences because there's something beyond what you can see in the physical. This is the spiritual realm. You see, when we die, we are, we are not just dead. We are alive in the spirit. Even science says matter cannot, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but only transferred from one existence to the other. So science testifies that the energy inside of you, the life inside of you, the intelligence inside of you, will live on. And when it lives on, it's going to live somewhere. That negative energy that's full of cursing and swearing and lies and sin, that's going to live where it belongs, in the trash bin. That's called hell. Okay? Anything that comes out of your body and is worthy of going into the waste bin, it goes there. It goes into the toilet. Your body testifies of good and evil, right and wrong. That's why the body excretes waste. Do you know that every one of us have waste in our lives? And you know what our body does? It removes it from our lives. Just like society, it removes criminals from society because it corrupts everything around you. But some of you don't realize how corrupt this world is becoming. You guys are endorsing the corruption. You're, you're promoting the corruption. You're watching the corruption. You're voting in the corruption. And you even give in to the corruption. You compromise to the corruption. And that's why this world is falling apart. Your kids don't even know what gender they are anymore. They don't even know what a male is. I know what a male is. A male is someone who has a penis. And a woman is someone who has a vagina. Did you know that? A woman gives birth to children. Men cannot be, uh, give birth. They're not called birthers. They're called parents. And parents can only be two people of the opposite sex. Male and female. They come together and they give birth to a child. It doesn't matter how many surgeries you have. A man will never be able to have a womb to give birth to a child. You can do an artificial insemination, but the uterus is not going to, the, the male body part's not going to hold that baby properly. There's going to be complications. And so we see today people are confused. Smart people, so called smart people with education. I say one thing the Bible says the fool has said in his heart, the fool, even old fools, old ladies who don't know right from wrong, old men that don't know right from wrong. How have we gotten so far from logic? I mean, people are university educated. We have the internet. We, 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 we come from a male and a female. Why is it that we don't even know? Hey, sir, I see you saying something and running away. If you have something to say and it's so intelligent, why don't you come up to the mic and challenge what I got to say? But you can't. You can't. There's nobody that can. There's nobody that can come to this mic and prove me wrong. Why? Because I'm not wrong. The Bible enshrines this truth. God made them male and female. He made them male and female. And this is the corruption that's entering into the whole world. And now what we do, we, we're proud of our sin. That's what's going on. We're proud of our corruption. How many people, sorry, you're screaming. I can't hear you because I have a microphone and the speaker's blocking your ears. But if you come up and, and you want to say something that's intelligent, come. You, you, you don't, you don't, are you walking by or what? You're walking by. Okay, but if you're walking by, why is it bothering you? Just walk by. Just turn it down. No, I'm not going to turn it down. This is my freedom of speech. No, I'm not in your face. You said you're walking by. If, if it's in your face, walk by. No one's spewing hate. Are you a female or a male? Who cares? I care. Why? Well, how should I treat you? Should I treat you as a male or a female? I don't care. You don't care. Okay, then I don't care about you. So why should I, why should I care about what you have to say and you, don't, and you say you don't care? Why do you even care? You know, you know, you care because there's something inside of you that's being pricked. It's the truth. The truth is hitting your conscience. You know that what I'm saying is true. That's why it bothers you. You see, if people are walking by, why does it bother you? When people are doing Santa Claus parades and I don't want to be a part of it, I walk on by. Why? Because it's a free country. But when people stop and they all of a sudden they get so irritated, it's because something I'm saying is true. Now, they said I'm, I'm saying hate. It's not a hate to identify and acknowledge that I came from a male and a female. I have a mother and a father. Every person here has a mother and a father. That's not hate. It's reality. It's fact. It's science. We say everybody go by the science. When this whole COVID thing happened, we went by the science. And, and now what's happened? The science disappeared. Nobody gets COVID anymore. What happened to COVID? I mean, they shut down the world for COVID. And all of a sudden, COVID, everybody's cool. I mean, and then they say, okay, well, people got the vaccine. Okay, you got the vaccine but then you're still wearing the masks. Okay, if the vaccine worked, why are you wearing the mask? And now nobody's wearing masks, the vaccine. What, what happened? The vaccine must be an eternal vaccine. Why do we need another vaccine if everybody's cool? 
What happened to the science? But I'm going to tell you the science that is stable from all generations. The science that said God created the male and female. This science nobody can dispute. Because no matter how many surgeries people go through, this science is a fact. You cannot change who God made you to be. There's something unique about how God made you to be. If you were made a woman, be a woman. If you were made a man, be a man. And I know it's difficult sometimes because sometimes we look at the other side. They say the gra they some, some people believe the grass is greener on the other side. But sometimes when you get what you thought you needed, you realize, wait, I had a lot already. There's things that women can do that men can't. There's things that men can do that women can't. But there's nothing wrong with that. We're, we're different, but we're beautiful. We're created in the image of God. There's something wonderful about that. I don't know why a woman would want to be a man. And I don't know why a man would want to be a woman when you're not. You see, this is the corruption that's entering in society. We are becoming proud, boastful, parading around our arrogance, our waste. Do you see anybody sitting around the toilet bin and, and saying, wow, you know, I want to play around with my poo. You know, it's, it's no, we don't do that. We don't hang around with our garbage. We don't hang around in, in bad things. We don't hang around in prisons. Uh, you know, maybe we should help the people in prisons. We should help those with psychiatric issues. We, we should remove the waste. You know, imagine a country that nobody removed the waste. This place would smell. It would stink. It would become foul. But nowadays, we're forgetting what right and wrong is all about. We're forgetting morals. We're forgetting the word of God. We're discarding the word and we're replacing it with a lawlessness. We're replacing it with confusion. What are people teaching kids now? What are people even teaching what's right and wrong? In fact, you go to school today and people are saying, well, we can't say for certain what is right and wrong. But everybody has a problem with preachers. So if, so if you can't say for certain what's right and for wrong, then why do you have a problem with preachers? It's because deep inside you feel there is a right and wrong. It's just the problem is you're so deluded in your mind that you think right is wrong and wrong is right. God predicted this in the book of Isaiah that the time is coming when people will think good is evil and evil is good. Look on the television today. You can't find a movie today where they try to plug in some kind of transgender thing or some gay relationship. You can't find a movie. Now you see rappers, okay? The black community, if you didn't know, is 80% Christian. And every black person in the United States, their grandmothers are Christian. Everybody has a Bible. But nowadays, even the black community is, is, is pushing this stuff. What, what's going on? Rappers wearing dress. Uh, uh, what's that guy, that basketball player? King LeBron. LeBron James is wearing a dress. Everybody's wearing a dress. What's going on? What's going on, people? We need to wake up and see what's going on in Australia, in Sydney. I hear Sydney's just as bad as it is in the United States and Canada. As corrupt as can be. And it started with something simple. It started with removing the word of God from the schools. Removing prayer from the schools. What have we replaced it with? The last time I went to an elementary school, and high school, there was a young person that, that I, 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 I had to drop off and... And uh, during the time when they used to pray, now they're listening to pop music and hip hop music. And all the kids are just bopping around and, 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 and talking about having sex before marriage. This is what they've replaced prayer with. They've replaced prayer with sex before marriage. You see, that's what happens. You see, anytime you remove God from your life, you have a subpar reality. You have a subpar morality. And when you give kids something that's less than the best... That's all you're going to get. You're going to get compromise. You're going to get delusion. You're going to get confusion. You're going to get people chasing after things that don't really matter in life. You see, the amazing thing about believing in God and having a God in your life is that you have something higher than you to point to. Thank God we have something higher than us, thank you, to point to. In fact, you know, we, we, we go to higher education, right? Because we believe that there's something higher to look forward to. There's a higher knowledge. That's why we have universities and, and master's degrees and, and PhDs. But what's smarter than the PhD? It's the person that made the PhD. In fact, if there was nothing bigger, then there would not be nothing to shoot for. But there is a God who's bigger. The Bible says God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And it's not that we can't understand God's thoughts in some way. It's just that our deluded thoughts are not God's thoughts. We think that there's not going to be a reckoning for our lives. But if you live long enough, you know that every decision that you make, you're going to have to face one day. 
you stole from your neighbor, guess what? It creates a division between you and your neighbor. It creates a patterns in your life where people start to hide and to run. They start to act different. And sooner or later, you're going to get found out. Everything you do, you cheat on, cheat on your husband, it's going to get found out sooner or later. Every adulterer that I know that has slept around on their husband, cheated on their husband, sooner or later, either somebody finds out or their conscience bothers them so deeply that they confess. Husband, I was sleeping around with your best friend. And then guess what happens? Heartbreak, devastation, confusion, separation, divorce, children struggle. This is what happens when we sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. This is a, this is a fact. Now you might be saying, well, I didn't die yet. Well, something's died in your life. Your conscience, was, which was once alive, is no longer alive in the same way. The light that was in your eyes when you weren't sinning. Remember when you were a young kid and you were living a pure life and all of a sudden you dabbled into witchcraft. You dabbled in it. You did something wrong. I remember when I was a kid, I did something wrong. I didn't even know what it, what it was, but I knew something deep inside. I shouldn't have done that. And my conscience shifted. My mind shifted. Everything went downhill the moment I sinned. And that's what happens. The Bible says, light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You see, when people stay in the dark, they trip over their, their, themselves. They fall over places that they shouldn't fall because they can't see. They intentionally blind themselves. And some of you have intentionally blinded yourself. Maybe you started out different. You didn't even know what you were doing. But you knew that something was wrong with what you were doing. I remember the first time I stole a car when I was young. My conscience was so strong. But I decided to follow my friends and steal the car. And the moment I stole the car, it was almost like my conscience vanished. And I started to do it anyway. I knew it was wrong, but I continued to do it over and over and over until the point I ended up in jail. Until the point I ended up having to watch over my back, wondering who's watching me, whether I'm going to go to jail, the police are going to find me, is somebody tapping my phone. You don't want to live like that. But people live like that. They're hiding. They're hiding. They're hiding away from God. That's why some of you don't want to go to church. Because you're hiding. You know something's in the church that you need. In fact, most people, even when they don't even believe in God, they want to get married in a church. Why? What's so special about a church if you don't even believe in God? Because you know that inside the church, there's something sacred. And marriage is supposed to be sacred. It's a sacred act, but yet we've turned our sacred act into something lewd. We became prostitutes on the street, walking around. They say this is Pride Month. Well, the Bible says pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. When you're proud of your sin, it's only going to bring shame. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 6. I love the Bible because before you even fall into your sin and fall into your shame, the Bible warns you. That's why I love the Bible. I've lived long enough to know that sin destroys your life. And now when I read the Bible and I realize, wow, the Bible was right. Man, that's the first thing I want in my life when I wake up in the morning. Guidance from the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now some of you think you're so wise. Amen. The fear of the Lord. You know, you know what it means to fear of the Lord? It means to have respect for something higher than you. It means to have reverence for something higher. We forgot about reverence. We don't know how to reverence our parents. You know, one of the greatest commandments, Jesus said, this is one of the greatest commandments with a promise that you honor your father and your mother. We don't understand honor. This is why the Bible says in the last days, people are going to be uh, 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 hating authorities, despising authorities. We don't like authority in our life. And that's why this world has become godless. We become lewd. We don't have any moral standard and moral compass. In fact, we've made our own moral compass. And our moral compass is no moral compass at all. And now we don't know what to do. The door has been flung wide open to the point that now anything goes. But you know what? You know what's going to go when anything goes? Respect. Your respect is going to go. That's why parents have no respect. Pastors have no respect anymore. Priests have no respect. Nobody in authority has respect. Nobody respects anybody. When you open the door like that, nobody will have respect. And that means you won't have respect. What goes around, they say, comes around, right? What goes around comes around. You disrespect, disrespect is going to come back to you. 
No one's going to respect you. And that's why a lot of young women are walking around today and their man does not respect them. Their boyfriend doesn't respect them. All they are to them is a piece of meat. And I know it. I used to be like that. I used to treat women like a piece of meat because I didn't have God in my life. I wasn't following the word of God. Thank God for the word of God because the word of God changed this fornicator that had no respect for women to someone that says, you know what? Women deserve respect. Yes, women deserve a marriage uh, certificate and a ring on their finger, just like Beyonce said. And I don't support Beyonce, but she said something right. If you love them, they should put a ring on your finger. You're not going to get that kind of behavior when you discard the word of God. You won't. Men don't even want to marry women anymore. Why should they? You're, you're sleeping around with them. I mean, back in the day, women had to be virgins and, and you couldn't get the, you couldn't get the cake unless you, unless you walked down the aisle. Nowadays, the cake is free. I know for a fact, if I wanted to have sex tonight, I could get five girls down the block and I could just say, hey, come over, let's hook up, let's go on Tinder today and let's get a, a groove on. In fact, I want to have sex with all of you. You see, y'all ladies and men today have no respect for nothing, not even your sexuality. That's why you're so confused. You don't respect your body. You don't respect relationships. You don't know the value of marriage. You don't know the value of your parents. You don't even know the value of a male and a female anymore. You don't even know who you are. You think I want to let send my kids to a school with a teacher that doesn't know if she's a male or a female? And you're going to teach my kids? Absolutely not. That's why there needs to be a reform in your thinking. Because if the teachers don't even know what they're teaching, then you need to pull your kids out of school. Because your kids are going to become dumb just like the teachers. You see, people are becoming dumb, but they have certificates. In fact, I think they're lowering the educational standards to such a point because of, of equality and, and they want everybody to feel a special and important. Listen to me, saints of God, people of God, people of uh, Sydney, you're important, but if you're not smart, you don't deserve to be a teacher. Straight up. And if you don't have the qualities, it's funny how we have a contradictory system. Government will take away your kids if you tell your little kid, your boy, that he's not a girl. Wow. What a, what a day and age we're living in. But the moment I start teaching the word of God, everybody has a problem. But you know, it's the foundation of the word of God that keeps society alive. Did you know that? The word of God, morals and dignity, truth and judgment is what keeps the fabric of Sydney going. The only reason why we have law and order is because we have the word of God. The moment that you discard the word of God, you will have no law and order. It's just going to become more toxic, more confusing, and more chaotic. This is what we're going through today in Sydney and Australia. And this is why God is sending preachers to the streets. Why? Because you're not listening and somebody has to save you from the fire to come. From your own marriage falling apart. Somebody has to save you. I mean, I don't know when they're going to start parading around in these cities. But what are they parading for? They're going to parade about something. But I wonder if there's anybody here that can parade for truth. I wonder if there's any person here that can parade for morality. You see, it's such a tragic time we're living in that we cannot even stand up boldly for the truth. We're afraid. Even those who claim to be in the truth are afraid to proclaim the truth. And that's why God has to sometimes raise up people to remind you not to be afraid of the truth because the truth is what sets people free. Some of you are bound by addictions. Some of you are bound by demons and you have them. You know that there's demons inside of your life. And the only reason they're in your life is because you've embraced negativity you embrace you embrace lies you you you've distorted the truth in your own uh, circle to the point that demons have entered inside of you and you're disturbed you're mentally disturbed emotionally disturbed but i'm here to tell you today that the truth can still set you free jesus christ is still the son of god jesus christ is still the lord and he can set you free the bible says whoever the son sets free is free indeed amen you see, some of you are in a relationship and you know you shouldn't even be in that relationship. You're with a boyfriend 
and you know that something about that relationship isn't right. He doesn't love you. You're wasting your time. You, you know, he's probably seeing all these other people and, and, and you know, you're, you're, you're just chasing after the wind. That's exactly what you're doing. Chasing after the wind. You ever chase after the wind? You don't even know where it's going. You don't even know where it's coming. You don't know where it stops. Some of you are in relationships, you're just chasing after the winds. That's why some of you keep going after, you, you've been sleeping around with so many men. How many men do you need to sleep around with before you realize, maybe I'm chasing after the wrong type of people? Maybe I'm going in the wrong direction. How many men do you need to be with, young ladies? And how many women hearts do you need to break before you realize that it's going to come back and bite you? You see, this is the problem. We don't want to take accountability for our lives. But God is saying the quicker you take accountability is the quicker you're going to have peace in your soul. You see, everybody's chasing after peace and looking for love, but it's just in the wrong places. That's the only reason why we preach. And if you think something about preaching is wrong, then you might as well never read a book again. You, may, you might as well never watch TV or look at anything on social media. You might as well not go to school if you think preaching is a problem. Preaching is simply communicating a message and information to help you to have a better future. God wants you to have a better future. God wants you to have a better life. And the only thing that I know is, is, that, that can bring peace is when we tap into the spiritual realm. It's true. You see, look, look, think about it. Everybody that doesn't know about the God of the Bible, what do they do? They end up going to the yoga shop, the yoga meditation, and they tap into their spirituality. Yoga means union with the divine. It's a spiritual thing. So they start to meditate and start to forget about the things around them. Stop chasing after the vanities in order to tap into the spirit. And all that tells you is that there's truth in the spiritual realm. That's not in the physical realm. What is it about neglecting the passions of the flesh? Even Buddhism teaches this. Buddhism says that the, the quicker that we let go of our attachments in this world is the faster we're going to have inner peace. There's some truth to that because Jesus said, whoever comes after me must deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow me. That teaching is in the Bible. That when you deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me, you're going to be where Jesus is. Now, the difference with Buddhism, some of you are coming from Buddhist backgrounds, and Jesus, is that Buddha was not sinless. He was a man named Prince Siddhartha, and he had problems in his life, and he had to get enlightened. That's why they call him the Buddha. He, he was enlightened. But Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He wasn't just enlightened. He is the light. And there's no sin in Jesus. So when you follow Jesus, you're coming to the true light. You might come to Buddha, but Buddha only had a little bit of what Jesus had. Jesus has it all. So if you're looking for true peace, it's not in yoga meditation. Because yoga meditation is you with an effort trying to get to God who is perfect. How many people can be perfect of themselves? No, you need the forgiveness and the mercy and grace of God in order to come into His, his presence. You can't just walk into to the king's palace uninvited. See, some of you think you can walk into God's kingdom uninvited. God, I deserve to be there. No, you don't. You're a sinner and your feet are dirty. Your heart is dirty. You don't deserve anything. What you deserve is punishment. But God in his mercy sent Jesus Christ to die for you. And by accepting that and denying yourself, not only do you get the awareness and the access to the spiritual realm, but you get forgiveness so that you can actually uh, embrace what God has for you. You see, the Holy Spirit is not going to fill a vessel that is, that is corrupt. The Holy Spirit will fill a vessel that's covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's where the Holy Spirit will dwell. You know, you could, you could have parts of your life that perhaps have some good in it. I'm, I don't doubt you. But you will never get filled with the Holy Spirit when there's sin in your life, unrepentant sin, unforgiven sin. And that is why we preach. We're giving you information so that you can access the spiritual realm, that you can get saved and get free and get delivered from your demons, get, get healed from your sicknesses, and actually have access to the God of the universe. That's why we give this information. We're sharing this information because this information isn't readily available. This information isn't readily available. It's not, you're not going to find it in the school anymore. Sometimes you're not even going to find it in the churches anymore. You're not going to find it in the temples anymore. You're not going to find it in the mosque. You're, you're not going to find it anymore because the whole world is falling apart. 
everything around you. And so God is doing his last ditch effort, reaching out to people where they're at on the streets, saying, listen, you need to see exactly what's going on in your life. Is that mine or hallelujah? Praise the Lord. You need to see what's going on around you. What's going on around you is people that are living and falling into patterns that are destructive, just like many of you. And it takes a bold person to acknowledge this. It takes somebody that's honest and true to say, you know what? There's something inside of me that's not right. There's something inside of me. And what this preacher is saying is true. The word of God is true. You know, if you don't take the preacher's word for it, you can read a Bible for yourself. You know, some people say, well, the Bible is an archaic book. It's corrupted. No, it's not. I've read the Bible so many times. I've read the Quran so many times. And I can tell you, you can't have a full Quran without the Bible. Did you know that? You can't understand Moses without the Ten Commandments. You can't understand Jesus without the Injil. You can't understand David without the Zabur. You can't understand uh, anything that God is trying to say. The Quran is like a Coles Notes version of the Bible. The Bible breaks down the details. And it's been tested, tried, and true. And I'm here to tell you today, the Bible is the Word of God. So many people over the years are starting to open up their eyes. They're coming from Muslim backgrounds. And let me just at least give it a try. I'm here to tell you today, listen, it's better to examine things for yourself than just, just to blindly walk down the road like the rest of the world. If you're here today coming from a different religion, that's okay. Let the truth guide you. You see, you have a conscience. God, that's like God's emergency backup plan. You see, if churches go corrupt and everything goes corrupt, you have a conscience. And God gives you logic. You want to know the logic of the gospel, why somebody needs to die for you? It's very logical, actually. You see, in the Old Testament, we saw that there was sacrifices needed. You know, even in Islam, there's sacrifices they do every time they go to Mecca. They just don't understand why. Why did Abraham do a sacrifice? Why do Muslims do sacrifices? They don't even know. They just say, because God said so. But if you go back in history, the reason why blood sacrifices were made before someone accessed God is because it recognized the gravity of sin and the holiness of God. That sin brings forth death. And without a sacrifice... There is no way to access the holies of holies. Now, why is a sacrifice needed? It's the same reason why we have punishment for sin. No, I'm not going to turn it down, but you can walk on by. God bless you. So the reason why we have sacrifice for sins and blood sacrifice is because, or even punishment for the, the crimes that people do, is because everything you do that is wrong requires a, 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 some kind of punishment that's equivalent. And, and, and uh, the Bible says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Islam even talks about this. If someone steals, they, they have to pay the, the punishment. Some, some Islamic country, they'll cut off your hand if you steal. If you kill, you have to be killed. Why are these punishments there? Because there's a truth written in our conscience that in order for something that is grave to be paid for, something grave has to be done to cancel out the problem. You see, if somebody offends you, someone steals a thousand dollars, what if they gave you a dollar back? Hey, I'm sorry, brother. Uh, you know, I stole your thousand dollars. I'm just going to give you one back. You're not going to be satisfied, are you? You want your thousand dollars back. If anything, you want a thousand dollars back with interest because they wasted your time and they wasted your effort and they took your money at the same time. You see, that's how God thinks, but he's even holier than man. You see, if you get caught for a crime, you got to pay the time. And there's a, there's a justice that must be served. This is just how human nature is. Something in nature, something in creation must be paid, uh, must uh, take the place of the offense that was done from you. This is what forgiveness is all about. And that's why Jesus Christ had to die. Because we are separated from God because of what we've done. We've we are spiritually dead. We are physically dead. When we stand before God in our sin, we are going to be cast into hell and pay for our crime for the rest of eternity. But God in His sovereign will and His, light, His love and His mercy for you sent Jesus Christ to take your place so that you can be saved. This is the gospel. It's written in human nature. In fact, in order for you to live, something has to die. Did you know that? 
Every time you eat food, you're killing something and taking the life from that animal, from the vegetable. It doesn't matter. You cannot live unless something dies. Why is it like that? I don't know. I wish that we could live and something didn't have to die. I wish we could somehow access the holiest things without a punishment. But every one of us know in our conscience and our logic that everything deserves a punishment. And the greatest punishment that we could ever receive is death. That is the highest punishment. And the payment for sin, what does, what does sin deserve? I mean, in a holy place where, where everything is pure and holy. What, if there was just one sin, how would you fix it? Do you know when there's, when there's a, 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 a major problem, there's mold inside of a house? You know, sometimes you've got to tear down the entire house in order to fix the house. You, you almost need to repair the whole house. You need to tear it down and rebuild the walls because the mold has gone so deep. You see, sin has gone so deep into the DNA, into the mind and the conscience of humanity that in order for humanity to be redeemed, there needs to be either a death on your part or somebody else needs to take your place. And that's why by faith, we embrace Jesus Christ and now through Christ, we access God. We access God through the blood of Jesus Christ. We live by the death of animals. We eat food. This is how we live. And spiritual, we live through Christ who died for us. This is the gospel in a nutshell. That's the logic of the gospel. The logic other ways doesn't make any sense. You see, every other religion out there, whether it's Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, they all say, well, you know what? God is going to weigh your life on a scale. If you're more good than bad, then maybe you'll get in. And, the, and it's always a maybe. It's never a guarantee. Because the only way we can guarantee we're getting into heaven is if we are either perfect or God has truly forgiven us. You ask any Muslim today whether they know for certain they're going to heaven, and all they will say is, I hope I can go to heaven. Because there is no sacrifice in their religion. They don't know. They can't know. Because they know their sin in their life. In their conscience, they know God is perfectly holy. So nobody deserves to go to heaven. The only one that can get into heaven, deserves to get into heaven, is those who have received the mercy of God. Those who have received the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Those are the only ones that are confident and bold enough to say, Yes, I can go. Because my debt has been paid. This is the difference with Christianity and all the other religions. That God offers a guarantee. He offers a pathway that is perfect. He offers a blood sacrifice. He offers true life. And the only one that can give true life is God. And God has sent His Word. His Word, which is perfect. There's only two things that are perfect. God and His Word. His Word is eternally written in the heavens. His Word is His expression, His being manifested on this earth. That is the Word. And Jesus is the Word. You see, some people struggle with the idea of Jesus Christ being the Son of God. But might I suggest to you this one thing. If there is no Son of God, there is no God. I'm going to tell you why. Because nobody can understand the uncreated. Nobody could know the uncreated unless the uncreated revealed himself in the created order. It is impossible for any one of us to say, I understand what's uncreated. I understand what's outside of creation. That's like saying the video game inside the computer understands the programmer outside the computer. He can't because it's beyond his comprehension. And that's what this world is like. It's like a computer programmer programming a computer and we are all in this matrix. We're all in this system because we are creation there is a creator. And that's why our mind cannot fathom it. So the only way that our mind can somehow fathom the uncreated is if the uncreated revealed something in the created order. He placed something in the created order that resembles him. Now Jesus Christ resembles the Father. That's why the Bible says, He who has seen me has seen the Father. Now, no one has seen God physically. That's why the Bible says, No one has seen God at any time but the only begotten who is in the bosom of the father has revealed him 
Now, what does that mean? It means that the flesh and blood of Jesus is not God. The, Man is not God. God is not a man. So when you see physically Jesus, that's not God. So for all those Muslims that are struggling, I hope I cleared up your struggle. No man is God. But God dwelt within him bodily. God revealed himself. So the spirit, when Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen God, he's not saying God is a Jew. He's not saying God has brown skin or white skin. What he's saying is that the qualities of Jesus Christ, the character, everything that Jesus Christ revealed, that was God revealing himself through a person named Jesus Christ. And the only one that was anointed to do that is the one called the Messiah, Jesus Christ. That's why he is the only Messiah. Does that make sense, people of God, people of Sydney? If you're Muslim here today, I hope that makes sense because there's only one Messiah in the Quran. And that word Messiah means anointed one. There's only one that is anointed to reveal the image and glory of God. Only one. It is only Jesus. That's why he's different. That's why everybody's debating about who he is. Because there was something unique about Jesus that's different. Every, nobody's debating about Muhammad. Nobody's debating about Buddha. Nobody's debating about, about anything else. Don't touch my stuff. Come on, don't touch my stuff. Hey, buddy, buddy, don't touch my I'm stuff. Got a meeting in there. Okay, you got a meeting and I got a meeting. Can't you see? Don't touch my stuff. So, everybody's debating about Jesus. But nobody's debating about Muhammad. Nobody's debating about Buddha. Because Jesus Christ was different. He was unique. He was special. This is what God is trying to declare today. Is that there's somebody special. Well, if you if you would have asked, there would have been a different story. Yes. Hi, hi, Gary. God bless you. Can you step down, please? Yes, what can I do for you, sir? Can you step down? Yes, what can I do? My what? name's Inspector Coffee from Day Street. Hi, 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 hi. All right, bless you. just so you know, I'm wearing body-worn video, records audio yeah. and video. Yeah, you're, you're being recorded do you as well. Have, do you have permission from council to have this microphone uh, set up here? What do you mean? Do you have permission from council to have this speaker what, what, system set is up? There, is there a bylaw that I'm, I'm breaking? Yes, yeah, sure. What, what, what is that? Some noise pollution, buddy. Noise oh, pollution. Oh, it is. Oh, can, I, can I see? I didn't, I didn't know. You can look for legislation up sure. yourself. Have you got some identification? Yeah, then? sure, sure. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody here today, we're preaching about Jesus Christ. And Amen. Amen. As far as I know, we got permission from the Lord, and there's also permission from Freedom of Speech Acts. Have you lodged so, the Form 1? What's, what is that? You lodged, is this a protest? Is that what you're saying this is? Um, well, we're protesting sin, number okay. one. So that, that's something that we're legally allowed to do. Okay. And we're also doing Freedom of Speech as well. So yeah, right. sin have, needs to be protest. Have you lodged the Form 1? What is that? A Form 1 outlining that you wanted to hold a protest here. In no, 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 no. It's not a this protest. is freedom of speech. We're, we're doing a lot of things right now. This is freedom of speech. No, I'm saying we're protesting we sin, okay. but we're preaching the gospel. So, yeah. so what there's two things you is, here. Have you lodged a Form 1? I don't know what a Form 1 is, but as far as I know, that is, is, is when, you're, when you're exercising your freedom of speech, you don't have to ask permission to well, have freedom of you speech. You do if you're going to obstruct traffic here in the mall. Oh, am I obstructing traffic? I didn't know. Am I in the way of anything? So I guess the answer to that question is no. You haven't lodged a Form 1. I don't know what a Form 1 is, but if I'm obstructing well, traffic... No, yeah, the answer is no. I don't know what a Form 1 is. So the answer is no. I don't know what a Form 1 is. Okay. But if I'm obstructing traffic, I can. I don't know who I'm blocking, but I, I'm standing here. Right. I'm not obstructing have traffic. Per, have you got permission from council to be using the speaker system? Like I said, I'm not sure what the bylaw you're referring to, but if, if you can show me that, I can... I can look it up. Well, have you got permission from council? I don't know what you mean by that. The answer that. is no. I don't know what you mean so by that. So no to no okay. form one so, and no so what, to no permission So what would you like me to council? do, officer? I'm expressing my freedom of speech. So well, what, what would you like? The process is, if you want to hold a protest, you need to lodge a form one. I'm exercising my freedom of that's speech, fine. preaching the gospel. Yeah, I'm a minister. so I, I, Yeah, so... Is, so that's one. You need to lodge a form one. If so as a minute... For, no, okay. So this is... First and two... Hold on a second. from council. Is it, is, it, is it something to exercise freedom of speech? Do I need permission to exercise well, You can freedom exercise speech? freedom of speech without the audio okay, system. Okay, I'll turn off the audio system. That's fine. Let's turn it off. Sure. Because you haven't got permission from council. That's fine. No, no, I'm going to write your details. You can write it down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, God said, the reason why we need the gospel and everybody is protesting about Jesus is because Jesus 
is the only disputable figure in history. It's not Mo, Mo, Moses, Muhammad, or anybody else. It's Jesus, because he's the only Messiah. Now, here's the interesting thing. In this month of June, there's going to be a lot of pride protests, people going around, and there's not going to be anybody worrying about amplifiers. If I came here playing some music, there's not going to be any problems. But the moment that you preach about Jesus and sin, everybody's up in arms. And that just encourages me and emboldens me that I'm doing something right. I'm doing something right because sin needs to be protested. Jesus needs to be preached. Somebody needs to know that there is hope. There is hope for sinners. I'm here to tell you today that if you're living in sin without Jesus, there is no hope. Did you know that? You see, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The reason why you need Jesus is because He's the sinless Lamb of God. He is the Son of God. He is the image of God. He's the glory of God. And it's the glory of God that we're missing in Sydney. We are missing God in Sydney. We're missing truth in Sydney. We're missing the Word of God in Sydney. What a day we've come to where preachers get written up for preaching about Jesus. The officers should be ashamed of themselves. Ashamed. Because preachers preach against sin. We're, we're making their job easy. You see, the moment preachers stop preaching, people will start walking around with guns and shooting police. But we preach against that. We say, no, put down the gun. Put down the knife. Stop living in sin. And everything is going to be all right. But it's only going to be right when you repent and give your life to the Lord. You see, Jesus Christ came for two reasons. To seek and save the lost. If you're here today living in sin, you're lost. So Jesus Christ came to save you. That's why we preach. That's why Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth. To show the mercy and love of God. That the love of God is rich and strong to anybody who's willing to listen and to hear. But He came for another reason. As a witness and a testimony as to how wicked this world is. Who's wicked? You're wicked. Every man is wicked without God. Living in sin is wicked. Practicing sin is wicked. Being unrepentant and proud of your sin is wicked. And so Jesus Christ came to show you, listen, I love sinners so much that I'll come. I'll show you the light. I'll give you a hope. I'll give you a chance. But there's still people in this world that no matter how much mercy, no matter how many preachers and prophets are sent your way, what did they do to Jesus? They crucified Jesus. What did they do to the prophets? They stoned the prophets. What did they do to the apostles? They killed the apostles. What is it with our hearts that is so vile and wicked? Thank you. That we would kill prophets and write up pastors. I guarantee if I was saying I'm gay and I'm proud, I would never be written up. You would be afraid to touch me. It seems like today the LGBT community has more rights than everybody else. But the moment a preacher comes along, they don't know what to do. Three police, four police stand in the corner. What do we do with a preacher? I'm going to tell you what you do with a preacher. Let him preach. That's what you do with a preacher. If they're worried about obstruction of traffic, um, which is the only thing they've got, we can just move everybody here. That's fine. We got, we got the whole crew coming down in bicycles for a preacher. Now a preacher's armed with a mic and a speaker. Ooh, very dangerous. You see, my words, it's something about the words of God that are dangerous. The words of God are dangerous. It's dangerous towards sin. You know why? Because 
when the preacher preaches, we don't want any sin. So if you love sin, I might be your worst enemy. God is against sin. Because sin is what destroys you and me. Sin is what destroys marriages. Sin is what destroys your young kid's mind. Sin is what harms individuals. It is sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The soul that sins shall die. I think I was even less loud with the microphone than with my mouth. You see, you can stop the preacher, but you can't stop the message. You can stop me from preaching, but the message is going to go on and on and on because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. What an amazing love. This is what I preach. But it doesn't come without acknowledging your sin. You see, we want to have Jesus. We want to have God. But we want to have our sin too. I'm here to tell you today, if you want to hold on to your sin, it's okay, I got it. You're not going to get far. The Bible says that it's your sin that brings your downfall. It's your sin. Did you know that? You want your marriage to be strong. Stop committing adultery. You want your relationship to be strong. Stop watching pornography. Pornography is almost watched by 70 to 80% of the men. And I could imagine that it's the same in Sydney. It's the same all around the world. You know, I was meditating on why men love pornography. You know why? Because men, they're looking for a woman or something to yield to their desires. They're looking for someone to fill their deepest heart. And they think that watching some naked lady on the internet is going to give them their deepest fantasies. But I wonder to myself, I wonder if a lot of men are looking for somebody to understand them, but, but people in their life that should understand them are so focused on their own life that they don't take the time to listen. You know, a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of women, a lot of men are looking for love, but it's so hard to find it. They want their husband to listen. They want their wife to listen. They want their parents to listen. But their parents are too busy trying to make money. Their husband is too busy trying to do whatever he's doing. Their wife is too busy. And so people feel alone. People feel that there's no one to look to. There's no one that understands them. And that is why God sent Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus Christ to be like you. Righteous like you. Righteous like God. To reach out to you. To show you that there is understanding. There is love. And the true understanding you're looking for is not in carnal flesh or wicked men. The understanding and the hope that you're looking for is in a relationship with God. Now maybe you're saying today, how can I have a relationship with God and I've never seen God? Well, there's a lot of things that we haven't seen that we believe in. We don't see the air that we breathe. But we believe we need oxygen. We don't see the word love in the sky all over the place, but we see the effects of love. You see, there's a lot of things we don't see, but we know exists. I'm here to tell you today, you might not see God with the physical eye, but God exists. And God is looking down on you today. And He's saying, I want you to See with spiritual eyes. Because you know that there's truth, but you can't put your finger on it. You know that there's justice, but you can't put your finger on it. You know there's love, 
but you can't put your finger on it. These are the invisible qualities of God that are written in nature. That God is saying to you today, I want you to pay attention. Now we're so busy today, we don't pay attention to anything. We don't pay attention to spiritual things. In fact, we're so busy. We're so busy. We're so busy today that we can't even think about where we're going in life. We can't even take the time to ask ourselves, what is the truth? If you want to ask me something, officer? Officer, you want to ask me something? Yeah, come, 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 come. You want to ask me something? Come. He won't come directly to you, but... <laughs> yeah, don't ask other people about me. You can ask me. I'm right here. We don't have to talk about You don't even have to say anything, but... Listen, I'm going to exercise my freedom of speech. But God is saying to you today, I want you to look deeper. Deeper from what everybody's just throwing in your eyes. You see, the media companies, the marketing companies are very smart. They know if they can get your, 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 your energy and your time and your attention away from God, they can control you. And that's exactly what they do with Instagram, Facebook, billboards, the things on television, the movies. They distract you. And from a very young age, they teach you to pay attention to things that don't satisfy. They teach you to chase money. But money never makes you happy. They chase, they teach you to sleep around fully well knowing that when you keep sleeping around, you're giving a part of yourself to Tom, Dick, and Harry. And then when you give yourself to everybody, you're left with nothing. They're teaching you that. They're teaching you to be confused about your gender, confused about everything. Because if they can get you confused, and make you believe confusion is the truth, then you're never going to look into the truth. Because you're going to be so brainwashed to think that confusion and chasing money and, and selfish ambition for a higher degree, all of these things, is what the meaning of life is all about. But that's not the meaning of life. Solomon said it, that the meaning of life is to fear God and keep His commandments. To worship the Lord and show forth the image of His glory. Because what that does is you're, you're exemplifying your purpose. You were made in the image of God. You were made in His likeness. And when you fulfill the image of God, you are living out your purpose. Nobody will ever truly be happy until they finish their purpose and they fulfill their God-given calling. You know how you know your God-given calling? So many ways. Number one... You know your God-given calling if you're a woman. You're built in a woman's anatomy. You have a calling by God to be a woman. If you have a male anatomy, you have a calling by God to fulfill that purpose. Because the opposite sex can't do that. Only you. It's like if you were built to be a boat, only a boat can float. If you were built to be a car, only a car can drive. It doesn't matter if the boat says, I want to be a car, I want to drive on the freeway. You can put him on a freeway, but he'll never drive. You can put a car in the water and say, man, I wish I was a boat. But the reality is, the car will sink in the water. And it's the same thing. When you try to go opposite to your purpose, when you go opposite to the agenda that God has given you. It is impossible to be fulfilled. God is saying, God bless you. You know, it's on live stream, so you can save your, you can save your uh, video footage. Watch it on ChristForgiveness.com. You can get the whole scoop, too. You know, I always have to smirk and laugh because what is it about preachers that makes everybody up in arms. Like, I'm serious. We got, we got people giving movies to kids where in these movies they're swearing, they're cursing, they're sleeping around with people, but nobody's up in arms. You as a parent, 
Police officers should be knocking on Hollywood's doors saying, I want to speak to you. Can I write you up? Because you're teaching kids to sleep around. You're swearing. You're setting a bad example. But we don't see police officers doing that, do we? We should be up in arms when people are teaching kids the opposite of what God made them to be. Police should be knocking on the teacher's doors. Can I have a word with you? I want to write you up. But no, nobody's writing up the criminals. Nobody's writing up the sinners. But I'm here to tell you today, the same way you're writing me up, God is writing you up. I'm here to tell every police officer that's writing up a preacher, God is writing up you in heaven. Your name is being recorded. Your actions are being recorded in heaven. And every time you go against a prophet, God is going to go against you. This is the word of God. The Bible says, bless them. If you bless the people of God, you will be blessed. If you curse the people of God, you will be cursed. You want to put Jesus on the cross and you think that one day there's not going to be a judgment? Those who put Jesus on the cross will spend eternity in hell if they didn't repent. Those who go against righteousness will stand before a righteous God one day. Unless they repent, they will go to hell. And you can capture that on video. It's on live stream. Anybody that lives in sin will go to hell. Anybody that's living in sin unrepentedly will go to hell. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That's why I preach it. Because God doesn't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want to see you suffer forever. God is so loving that even though you write up preachers and you persecute preachers, God still sent Jesus to die for you. What a loving God. What a merciful God. What a courageous God. How many people do you know would forgive those who put them on the cross and put them to death? Not many. But God's love is so deep. You persecute God all the time and He still shows you love. You put His Son on the cross and God still shows you love. You kill the prophets and God still shows you love. That's why the judgment of God is going to be forever and ever and ever. How much times does God need to show you He loves you for you to repent? But if you get worse and you start to persecute his servants, it's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for you. It's better you walk on by and say, God bless you. Maybe God will have mercy on you. It's better that you, if I was a police officer and I heard a preacher saying, repent of your sins, I would say, you go preacher, because we're doing the same job. That's what I would do. If I was a policeman and having a man preach on a microphone about God's love, I would walk on by and pretend I didn't see him. I'd say, preacher, you keep telling them we need more love in this world. We need more righteousness in Sydney. But maybe that's just me. Maybe, maybe I'm too ambitious. Maybe I'm too idealistic. To think that those who uphold the law will push righteousness. But no, today we have compromisers. We have people that are upholding the law, but don't live for the law. We have people that are supposed to be doing justice, but instead they persecute and write up those who are preaching the truth. This is the world we're living in. It's a wicked world. We are living in a wicked place. This is why preachers are needed on every street corner. And as long as I'm alive, I'm going to raise up as many preachers on every corner to preach the words of God. Because my king is coming soon. I thank God that we have a king that's higher than the president, that's higher than the prime minister. My king is coming soon. He's coming to judge the living and the dead. And all those who stood up with God for me will be in His kingdom. 
The Bible says not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter His kingdom. But those who do the will of God will be in His kingdom. Many on that day, please come here, sir. I, I, I want, if you can turn it around. What can I do for you? Okay, if I'm not under arrest, you can come this way. Okay, come. Okay, come. You're going to film it anyway, that's fine. Yeah, sure. So my name's Inspector Coffey from Day Street Police Station. I'm wearing body-worn video that records audio and video. Uh, so we had a look at your driver's license. You're from Canada. Canada, yeah. And whereabouts are you staying here in Sydney? I'm staying in a hotel, uh, Four Seasons. Here in the city? Yeah. Okay, which, which one? Four Seasons. I don't know where it is. Okay. Yeah. How, do you have a contact number here in the city? Uh, I do, and you can take my phone number, but yeah. uh, do I even need to legally give it if I don't want well, to? Well, I'm just asking you at no. the moment. Okay, uh, so here's the situation. Yeah. You haven't lodged a Form 1 uh, in terms of wanting to hold a authorised protest? It's not, a, not an authorised protest. I'm freedom of speech. It's an unauthorised protest. It's not a okay? protest. So what that means it's is... It's not a protest. It's freedom of speech. Let me just explain to you what the rules are about an unauthorised protest. It's not a you protest. Can, it's freedom of speech. Okay, well, you can have your freedom of speech... Uh, what you can't do is block the pedestrian traffic here in the mall. Okay? okay? Do you understand that? And I'm you not. You haven't lodged the Form 1. Right. And I'm not blocking it. Okay, I'm, I'm just letting you yeah. know. But if your crowd gathers to such an extent that it does, then that, that yeah, will sure. be something that... So I, can you just help, help me to know what a blocking... Because there's people walking by, they're all blocking. I so. just want to make sure yeah. people can walk through the mall. 100%. Okay? And number two is, the Local Government Act says that if you want to use a loudspeaker or amplified device, yeah. you need to get permission under the Local okay. Government Act. No problem. That's Section 8. Sure. Section 68, okay. the Local Government Act. I'll, I'll, I'll give, so I'll you give it a look. look that up yeah. as well. Yeah. But as far as I know, you don't have permission, do you? Uh, what kind of permission? Permission to use the amplifier. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure which, which uh, thing. I have to look it up. No, no, but you either I, I don't even know what it says, so okay. I have to see if well, I, then I, if I, I have I assume you haven't got permission. I have to see what it say says first. So. Well, it's, it I'm says... Your real yes. Christian God is watching your real Christian it says you need to get permission Amen. if you want to operate yeah. a loudspeaker. Well, I'm not, I haven't been operating it for the last 20 minutes. Okay, so. or set yeah. up a sound amplifying device. That's fine. That's so do you understand that you can't do that? Because you I, Yeah, I'm going to look it up, but I'm not using it now. So okay. I'll, I'll oblige with what okay. you're saying. and yeah. But I've given you a warning now not sure. to do that in the future. Sure. Okay, now if you go back and start using it again... I intend to issue the fine for that. Sure. Okay, do you understand that? Because no you haven't got permission. No problem. So you need to make sure you don't use that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, and how long do you plan to stay here for? Not sure. Like roughly or? Until the Lord leads. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, how long have you been here in Sydney for? I don't know what the purpose of that question is, but. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, do you understand the parameters that you. I understand do? what you're saying, and I'm going to look up the bylaws. Yeah. Okay. You understand you can't use that amplifying device. Yeah, I understand that you quoted a bylaw, and I'm, I'm going to look it up. But I'm not using it right now anyway, okay. so... And you don't have any intention to use it, yeah? I don't have any intention, and I will look it up. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, David. All right. Well, praise the Lord. So, apparently the issue is I'm not blocking the sidewalk. Uh, I'm, I'm not even on the sidewalk. And apparently it's loudspeaker. Now, I guarantee you, 100%, there's going to be a lot of people here when they're gone using a loudspeaker, singing music, playing all sorts of stuff. And you know what? You can't even get a permit for, you, for, for being a preacher. I'm not trying to solicit money. I'm preaching. So it's really strange. It's when the gospel is preached. I guarantee if I was singing Michael Jackson songs on a loudspeaker, they would walk on by. But nonetheless... I'm not here to deal with Michael Jackson. I'm here to tell you about Jesus. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and He's coming back soon to judge the living and the dead. And He's coming back for a reason. He has shown His love and His mercy over and over. But no matter how many times He's expressed His love and called people to turn away from the things that destroy their life. People have chosen to live in sin. Shame. Now, I don't know, officer, there's a guy with an amplifier over there. So, if you can tell me you're going to shut him down, 
then we it's fair is fair. But if you're not going to shut them down, then let fair be fair. But and if there is a permit, tell me where to get one. But I guarantee you, you go to the council and you tell them I want to preach about Jesus. I'm not here to make money. So the officers go in there to turn him down. So let's see if he turns him down. I'm okay with him. It's a free country. You see, people want to control the propagation of the gospel. It's so easy to get a permission from the secular community to preach about sin and shame. But it's hard for someone to agree, I want to preach about Jesus. Trust me, it's going to be an interesting battle, an uphill battle. But we're going to see what this street corner is used to. Now, how many of you come down this street corner often? Put up your hand. Do you guys hear people on speakers a lot? Yeah. All the time. Do they get shut down? No. Never. You hear that? <laughs> I'm not born yesterday. I'm not born yesterday. But anyway, nonetheless, I'm willing to experience persecution like Christ for the sake of the gospel. I think the gospel should be propagated loud and clear on the mountaintop. You know what they sing at Christmas time? Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. You see, we sing that as a culture, but we don't believe it. We don't believe a lot of things anymore to our own deprivation. That's why the king is coming. Because the more that Sydney lives in sin, it's the more that God's creation gets destroyed. And God will allow it for a certain time, but not forever. Some of you are waiting for the coming of the Lord. You're waiting for your husband to, to start to love you. You're waiting for your wife to cherish her marital vows. You're waiting for your children to wake up from sleeping around with boyfriends, even sometimes without protection. Our whole culture is falling apart. And if you as a culture would stand up and say, listen, we need law and order. We need righteousness. We need God's word. Then everybody would change. It would be a shift in the way police think. It would be a shift in the way teachers teach. There would be a shift. But right now, we're shifting in the wrong direction. We're going downhill. So what do we need, Sydney? What's the answers? More confusion in elementary schools? Is that what we need? Do we need more movies promoting promiscuous sex? Is that what we need? Do we need more violence on the movies and the television programs? Is that what we need? Do we need more confusion? Do we need more atheistic mindsets in the system? No. What we need is the Word of God. We need righteousness. We need the Bible. We need the Gospel. That's why I preach it. The gospel is becoming illegal. The gospel is becoming a taboo. The things of God are becoming a crime. But nobody is doing anything about it. That's why Jesus Christ is going to come again. And I'm here to tell you today as a preacher, whether you like me or not, whether you think my... Style is right. Some of you are standing by and say, oh, I'm a Christian. But you never tell anybody about Jesus. But you're a Christian. You say, I'm a Christian. But when last have you read the Bible? But you say, I'm a Christian. You say, I'm a Christian. But you never pray. Muslims pray more than you. 
and you say you have the Holy Spirit, but your life is not holy, but you're a Christian. Everybody's a Christian. We wear crosses, but we don't live like we're crucified. We say, Jesus is my Lord, but we never let Him govern our hearts. But we're a Christian. You see, Christianity today is a joke. And that's why even Christians will hate on preachers preaching about Jesus. How can a Christian hate a preacher? God bless you. How can a Christian hate on another Christian preaching about Christ? Now, if you can do it better, then you should be sharing the gospel. If you can do it better, where's your crowd listening to the gospel? The reason why I preach on the streets is because of people like you that want to hear the gospel. I'm not here for those who don't want to hear the gospel. If they don't want to hear it, they walk on by. Jesus said, if you preach the gospel in one city and they don't like you, wipe off the dirt and go to the next. Because somebody's going to get saved today. Somebody's going to get healed today. Somebody's going to get delivered today. Somebody's going to get transformed today. Hundreds of people walked on by today and heard the message of Jesus Christ. Was it worth it? Absolutely. It's worth every ticket. It's worth every write-up. It's worth every imprisonment. It's even worth crucifixion. Jesus Christ went to the cross and because of what He did, millions, if not billions, have accepted Jesus Christ. If there's no sacrifice for Sydney, Sydney will never be changed. Every great transformation came with a sacrifice. What sacrifice are you willing to make to see your kids get back to the Lord? If you're just walking a casual life, things won't change. You're not going to see change in your life. Now we hear some amplified sound over there, but nobody's over there. Who am I, right? They clearly came with big loud speakers. He's got a permit. Can you guys, how come you guys never told me where to get a permit? I'm asking now, where can I get a permit to preach the gospel? I can get a permit to preach the gospel? Council, how, how, what do I have to do? Online form? And I can preach the gospel every day? With amplified sound? Okay. Well, then that, that's, uh, that's what we're going to do then. Do I have to pay for freedom of speech? It's free. Okay. Okay, so I have to ask for permission. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to put the law to the test and ask for permission to preach the gospel with loudspeaker in public square. And let's see. But you know what? The funny thing is, I guarantee they're not going to give the freedom of speech that everybody deserves. Why? Because there is no permit you need to preach the gospel. It's under the section of freedom of speech. And if I have a right to speak, I have a right to be heard. And in busy places where everybody's talking, there's a reasonable sound allowance and it can be fought in court. And so it's just a matter of whether I want to go that route or not. But the point is, we're coming to a day where they're making it very difficult to preach the gospel. If you're a Christian and you want to see a change in Sydney, there needs to be a sacrifice for the Lord. And so I want to ask you something today, whoever you are, how many of you are coming from a Catholic background? Put up your hand. How many of you are coming from an Orthodox background? So what you need to do when that happens, you need to just turn the camera so people can see. So who's, who's coming from a Catholic background? Put up your hand. All right, you got someone behind you too. Brother, behind you. Okay, work with my cameraman. He's new. How many of you are coming from a Orthodox background? Put up your hand. Okay, keep your hand up. 
How many of you are coming from a Protestant background? Put up your hand. There's a couple of people. And how many of you are coming from a Muslim background? Put up your hand. There's one, there's one. Okay. How many of you right now are not sure what you believe in? Put up your hand. Okay. So how many of you actually believe in God? Put up your hand. Okay. Okay, good. Now I'm going to share some things with you. And, and thank you for putting up your hand, young man. Come on, give this young man a big hand. This young man is not sure what he believes in. But the fact that he's here means that he has a calling on his life. God is speaking to him, otherwise he wouldn't be here. So there's a few groups of people here. Everybody coming from a different place. But there's only one God. Did you know that? There's only one God. And the Bible says there's only one Lord. And in a nutshell, there's only one Messiah. There's one person that's worthy enough to image the fatherhood, the lordship, the holiness of God on this earth. And it's Jesus Christ. There's one faith. Why is there only one faith? Because there's only one God and there's only one way to this God. And it's consistent. Regardless of where you come from, there's only one faith. But we seem to differ about faith. We seem to argue about what the truth is. But it's very simple. If you can say there's one God and there's one Messiah named Jesus Christ, then the question is, how did Jesus live? Jesus lived holy and sinless. So what this means, all the prophets tried to live holy and sinless. So that means there's a standard of right and wrong. And those who are righteous in this world, we need to follow their lifestyle, especially Jesus. We need to walk with Jesus. What did Jesus teach? How did Jesus live? We ought to follow his teaching. One thing Jesus said, He said, unless a man or woman is born again, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. To be born again is simple. Every one of us are born into this world through water, through a belly, of a womb with an amniotic sac. And when that child is born, that the fluid comes out and they come into this world. That's how we're born physically. But Jesus said, you must be born spiritually. What this means is you cannot be born a Christian. You cannot have somebody make the decision of faith for you. It's common sense. Your parents might want you to go to university. But unless you study, do the exams, and do the tests, and you go to school, you will never graduate university. I'm just going to pause for a second. With all the crime happening in Sydney, I have two officers protecting me while I preach. This is your tax dollars. Two officers. Hey, I don't mind you guys following me everywhere. You guys could be my personal bodyguards. <laughs> Amen.